Hey everyone, it's Matthew here from Midland Pictures. Today we're going to take another look at Final Cut Pro 10 and we're going to look at nine helpful tips that are going to feel like a magic trick. These are things that when I found out about them, I was like, oh my gosh, you can do that? I'm sure all of us in the software that we use to do what we do, there are key commands, shortcuts, checkboxes, menu items, things that we find where we go, how did I not know about this before? So I wanna go through nine things in Final Cut Pro 10 that gave me that reaction, that feeling like, oh, how did I not know about this? So let's do it. All right, so one of the tips is about retiming clips. This came up in a message board in a Final Cut Pro user group that I'm in. And when I told the person how to do this, they said that they had been working in Final Cut for like four years and never knew you could do this. So let's check out the screen recording. I've got a, a clip here and it's at 100%. And to access the retime menu, the custom retime menu, just click on this down arrow and choose custom. So let's say that you wanna change the speed of this clip, but you don't actually want the duration to change. We can see that this clip is five seconds and nine frames long. So we wanna keep that length, but we wanna double the speed of the clip. So let's go ahead and hit 200% and look at that. The speed changes, but the duration of the clip doesn't change. So how does that happen? It's this right here. See this little checkbox here called ripple? It could be something that you have overlooked in all the years that you've been editing in Final Cut. Let's go ahead and undo this. And then when Ripple's checked, you'll see a difference when we change the percentage of the clip. Check it out, now it's shorter. This is what gets a lot of people frustrated, especially with the magnetic timeline. They wanna retime clips, change the percentage, but they don't want the clip duration to change because they've got their edit exactly where they want it. So that's one of the tricks where, when I first found out about it, I was like, oh, that is awesome. How did I not know about that before? Because most of the time what people do is they'll hit ripple, they'll change it to 200%, and then they gotta go down here, hit Control D, 509 to get it back and now it's back to where you started. A bunch of extra steps. We don't need to mess with that. So that's the first one, pretty awesome. All right, so this is one that I considered putting in my previous video about uh, how to master the magnetic timeline. And this really applies to clips anywhere in the timeline, whether it's primary storyline or a secondary storyline or clips above a timeline. And so when I'm going through my videos, and I'm editing down what I'm saying to you, to the camera, I need to cut out a lot of little stuff, sometimes cut out big chunks, and there's a key command that really helps with doing that very quickly. So let's say that this chunk right here where I've got a little gap and I don't really want that there, and this is a bunch of stuff that I'm saying that just doesn't really need to be there. So what I wanna do to quickly shorten this clip from the end here to this cut point that I'm going to make. I don't wanna to have to do it this way where I'm like, I hit blade and then I delete it, which is, you know, it's fine, but it's a couple of steps. What I can do, because I know I have a cut point here, is I can actually just click here and then hit option right bracket and it pulls it down to where it needs to be. So I save myself a couple of steps there. It's a really kind of simple edit, but uh, something that I really like to use, especially with the magnetic timeline. Now let's say we don't want all of this part, but we wanna keep this one. Move your playhead here and then hit option left bracket and it pulls everything in. I do this a lot actually, and I'm gonna just pop out here real quick and throw something down here at the end of the timeline and pull up my multi-cam. So let's say you're working on an edit and this is just this is just like the raw footage from a vlog that you did. If you zoom in a little bit, you know, we don't have any of those edit points like we did uh, further down my timeline. This is just one huge clip. So you want to start cutting this down. You can see there's some dead air here. So what I'll do is I'll hit blade, move the playhead over here, hit option left bracket, just pull it in. Let's say I want this one pulled in. Um, I want to keep all of this part, but I want to lose this. So I'll hit Command-B, bring this over, 
and then hit over like there to get that to get that pulled out. So I use this to really fly through. Like I can see like these are multiple takes, let's say just based on the waveform is what I'm judging. So let's say, oh, there's me like scratching my face. Don't do that, coronavirus. So I'm gonna hit Command B and then I want all of this gone. So then I'm gonna hit Option left bracket and just bring it all in. I just think that it's a really quick way to fly through a big piece like this where you're you know, you got a big 15 minute long multi-cam and you wanna really just hammer through cutting out chunks of it. When I first read through like all the keyboard shortcuts for Final Cut and I saw that one, I was like, yes, that's something I've like had the instinct to, to want to do, but I didn't know how to do it. And now that I know the key command, I'm so much faster. So the next one that I have is another one that I actually learned fairly recently within the last few months. Whenever you wanna get a title tool, you always have to go up to titles and then look, you know, click on the top one, find basic title, and then hit Q to drop it on your timeline. I almost always use basic title and then customize it from there. What I didn't realize is you can do a very simple key command to put a basic title by default on your primary storyline. So if you hit Control T, it just drops a basic title right in. Look how much time and how many steps I just saved with one simple key command. So that is just no brainer, one you have to use especially if you do a lot of titling on your videos. And you can see from my videos that, you know, I really like to throw titles in, especially like all these key commands and stuff that I want you all to know. It's just a great one to use, gotta learn it. It feels like magic when you've been doing like five or six steps to get it to get a title in there in the past, and now you can do it with just one key command, amazing. All right, so this is another one that when I found out about it, I was like, oh, Oh, this is like such a huge time saver. This is another key command based tip. And let's say that you're working with some B-roll and this clip here, you're like, oh, I don't really wanna do my screen recording. I wanna actually show a clip of the thing I'm talking about. And you wanna preserve this duration. So we know this clip, hit Control D. We know it's three seconds, nine frames. So we wanna preserve that duration. And without having to like go into this clip and hit an in and then hit an out and then bring it down and then shorten it. Okay, there we want it there. And then we gotta drop it down. That's a lot of steps. What if we just wanna replace this clip with something up in the event browser without having to worry about getting the exact selection right down to the down to the exact frame. So we've got this clip here, it's at our playhead. I'm gonna select it. And then up here, I'm gonna mark an in. I don't even care what the out point is, as long as I know I have more than three seconds, nine frames. If you hit option R, it's just gonna automatically replace that clip with the duration of your selection that matches the duration of the clip you're trying to replace. It's perfect, super quick, super easy. This one to me is just, I love this one. This next one is another key command shortcut. It's a really quick and simple one. It's not necessarily for editing, but it's more for like finding stuff in the event browser. So let's say you're working and you really wanna find this clip in the event browser. Instead of going up to your different events and going through all your bins or keyword collections, it's just easier to hit a quick key command and locate this clip in the event browser. So if you hit Shift F, it pulls it right up. You can see we've got the in and out marked for that part of the clip. If you wanna change the duration of it just so that you can see it a little bit easier, you can see it's here in yellow. That's a really quick and easy way to go right to that clip and start looking at other parts of it that maybe you need to access. There is a pop-up menu that you can get to do that where you pull um, reveal in browser uh, and it of course shows the key command shift F there. A lot of you that might rely on the menus, the right click menus and the uh, top left menus, uh, you might just be doing that already with that. But for me, someone who likes key commands, Shift F is a great way to locate that clip in your event browser. That's one that I learned very early on in using Final Cut and I've always used it and loved it. Feels like magic every time I do it, just can't help it. Another one that I learned was I think actually probably within the last year. So when you're working in your timeline and you're zoomed in a little bit, sometimes you wanna pop out and see the whole timeline. Well, I would always just hit Command minus a bunch of times until it you know, was wide enough for me to see everything. But what I didn't realize is there's actually a trackpad gesture, if you're a trackpad editor like me, that lets you immediately 
put the timeline into the exact size of your viewer window. If you use two fingers and tap twice on your trackpad, so double tap with two fingers, it immediately pops the timeline out to fit your window. I have been using this for the last year all the time. To me, it feels like magic. You're zoomed in, you just need to quick pop out. You don't wanna hit Command minus a bunch of times. So again, double tap with two fingers, boom. You're out, you got your whole timeline in your viewer, you can see everything and then navigate to the next portion of the video that you need to go to. It's amazing, love it. Another key command that I use a lot, and this really helps with the magnetic timeline, is when I need to copy a clip to another part of the timeline. So let's say that this screen recording I need later on in my edit. So I'm gonna hit select it and hit Command C. And then let's say I need it down here, but I'm gonna do like a kind of a split screen compositing thing and I need it to be above the primary storyline. Well, if I just hit Command V, it'll plop it right into the main primary storyline and mess up my edit. So the other way that you can paste it is by hitting Option V and it puts it above your primary storyline. That's a really nice way sometimes too, if you're like, well, I don't know exactly where I wanna put this in my primary storyline, but I know I want it down in this area. That's another really nice way to be able to just get it down there, get it up above the primary storyline so you can start working with it in your edit and then figure out exactly where you wanna put it once it's in the area where you want to use it. Oh, my kid is up. So I need to go see what she wants. Hang tight. Okay, yeah. So the heat turned on, which it wasn't supposed to. So my four-year-old just woke up and she was hungry. So it's 10, 15 at night and she goes to bed between 7.30 and 8. So she wanted a little snack and I'm gonna go check on her after I'm done filming this. But I've got a couple more tips for you guys to go over. So you may have noticed in my event browser that you see a lot of these orange bars here across the clips. And you might be saying, I don't have that on my event browser. What's that mean? Well, this is one of my favorite things, one of my favorite magic tricks for Final Cut 10. And what it's doing is it's showing you what portions of clips in your event library have been used in your edit. But it will show you every clip that's in here. It shows an orange bar for what duration of this clip is represented in the event browser, which is awesome. So the way that you can toggle on these orange bars on and off on your clips in the event browser is to go up to view and then you're gonna choose browser. And then down here, you can see all these options that you have for what to show. Look, you can show used media ranges. You see that they go away. And then if you click view, browser, used media ranges, you see that they come back. I love this feature, being able to see what portions of clips you've used already. If you're skimming through B-roll especially, being able to see that orange bar represents something that's already in your timeline, so that you're only looking at portions of clips that you haven't used yet, especially if you're really struggling to find some B-roll for a big edit that you're doing. It's just an amazing feature that focuses you into what you're looking for and helps keep you in the editing flow so that you're not disrupted, popped out, trying to figure out what you have used and what you haven't used. So definitely use that one. So the next one I'm gonna show you is kind of a, a like a secret menu item, I feel like with Final Cut Pro 10. This is something that I discovered almost by accident and it came along when I was having a lot of b-roll that I was importing through Finder. And this sometimes is a byproduct of the importing style that I use, which is I don't use the import menu in Final Cut. I click and drag everything from Finder. For some reason, I like the control of it. I really like interfacing with Finder a lot more because of the column view that I like to use. Whereas in the Final Cut importing menu, it's all those like little drop down arrows. And because I have such a detailed folder structure, I don't like having to tunnel down to my items, so I'd, I'd rather have it pulled up in Finder and then just click and drag it over. So let's say here I've got all these B-roll clips and I'm like, man, I could have sworn there were a couple more clips that I shot. And I see here down at the bottom that I've got 70 items. But then when I switch to Finder, I see that in the same folder that corresponds with that B-roll that I have 72 items. Well, instead of sitting here and going, okay, well, I have, you know, and cross-checking which ones you've got and figuring out which ones are missing, Final Cut does this amazing thing where if you select all the clips 
and just drag them over it only adds the two clips that you were missing. It doesn't double up all the clips so that you have now 142 clips or whatever in there. It just adds the two that were missing. You can see I've got 72 clips in here now, 72 clips in Finder, the two clips that were missing are added in. Now I do have to kind of go find them and be like, okay, which ones were they? And a little trick that you can do, I'm gonna undo it. So it was these two bottom ones. Uh, obviously, but a little trick you could do is you could favorite all these so select them all and then hit F and Then when you bring these two clips in through the that kind of bulk import trick Whatever those clips were if they happen to not be in order like mine are they would be unfavorited And you'd be able to quickly see which they are and then if you want to unfavorite all these clips you can just uh, hit the U key and it'll take the favoriting off. So that's like a little kind of work aroundy trick that you can use as my heat kicks back on and messes up my audio. So that's great. Oh, God. And now I've got a bonus one. I wanted to give you guys a little treat, something that I want to do an entire video on, but I thought I would give you just a quick preview of that future video by showing you one cool thing about this feature. And this is the timeline index. Now I'm not going to go over the whole timeline index, but I'm going to show you a quick thing that you can do with something like a transition. Let's say in your timeline, you have a bunch of transitions and they're all, let's say cross dissolves. All right. So if you type in cross dissolve, the timeline index again is an index of your entire timeline. So you can search for stuff in your timeline through the timeline index. It's kind of like a mini event browser for your timeline. It's amazing. Again, I got to go into well, much more detail in another video but I just want to touch on this one thing so let's say that you forgot to change the type of cross dissolve you did so instead of having to go in and select each one of your cross dissolves to change the type of cross dissolve it is all at once you can actually do that through the timeline index you can see that as I make these selections these get turned gray well you don't have to select it in the timeline you can actually select them all here and then they all get selected in the timeline when that happens you in your inspector have the ability to change the type of cross dissolve it is the ease amount the type it is etc so I'm like the film style transition so I can change all of them all at once to film now let's say I decide to go back, the film one looks funny, whatever. Instead of again going through and selecting each cross dissolve or going to each cross dissolve and one by one changing the type. Okay, well I gotta go to this one and then I gotta switch it to video. And then I gotta go to this one and I gotta switch it to video. Who wants to spend all that time doing that? Use your timeline index, search for cross dissolve, select them all, go up here, and then choose fill and now they're all changed guess what else you can do now that they're all selected you can hit Control d and you can change the duration of them if you want them to be 10 seconds long you can make them all 10 seconds as long as there's enough footage on either side of them to do so i mean come on the timeline index total magic amazing that's a little bonus tip I wanted to give you if you stuck through the whole video. So I really appreciate everyone watching. If you're new to the channel, give us a like on this video. Hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you get notifications every time we upload. You can also follow me on Instagram. I'm at Matthew T. O'Brien. And for Midland Pictures, we're at Midland Pictures. If you have any comments, thoughts, opinions, tips that you have for me to consider, I would love to hear from you in the comments. Definitely drop us a line. We love hearing from you. I think that's going to do it for this video, everyone. It's 10 30 at night and i think my four-year-old is finishing up her snack and needing a little bit of help getting back to sleep so i'm gonna go upstairs take care of that and start thinking about what i can do next for another final cut video thanks again everyone for watching and until the next video i will see you soon